As we continue through 2019, there's going to be a lot of discussion and attention on CD Projekt Red, because there's an expectation that Cyberpunk 2077 could be launching this year. I personally still think it'll be early 2020, but obviously if everything is indeed ready, a late 2019 release would be amazing. Right now I think I can say it's likely our next big reveal of Cyberpunk 2077 will be on Microsoft's stage at E3 2019, where it's likely we will get an announcement of a release date alongside obviously new games gameplay and footage. Does CD Projekt Red do something different, maybe announcing a release date earlier this year, maybe at PAX East? It's possible, especially since back in 2015, CD Projekt Red attended the event revealing a few minutes of new Witcher 3 Wild Hunt gameplay. Anyway, if our next Cyberpunk 2077 reveal does not come until E3, I personally think we will see an announcement of early 2020 for the release date. With a new franchise and just looking at the marketing of The Witcher 3, I think that makes the most sense. Back Right before E3 2014, CD Projekt Red announced The Witcher 3 would release in February of 2015. Obviously, that would be delayed later to May, but honestly, like CDPR has been saying, it's coming when it's ready, and I firmly believe they mean that. Following the mess of Fallout 76 for Bethesda, which was criticized for just how buggy and glitchy it was, and it kind of still is, and additionally, the pushback that CD Projekt Red even received themselves for The Witcher 3 being buggy at launch, I think they will take their time to make sure the game is as polished as possible before launch. Now I wanted to start this video discussing the release date mainly due to the recent news that CD Projekt Red has lost another key developer. Sebastian Stepien, I'm horrible with these names guys, you know that, one of three creative directors on The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and narrative and setting director on Cyberpunk 2077, he has left the company to join Blizzard Entertainment. As some of you might recall, back in December, CD Projekt Red also lost associate design director Kyle Rowley, who moved back to Finland to rejoin Remedy Entertainment. There has been some concerns raised about these departures, but I personally don't believe there's much to worry about, for at least Cyberpunk 2077. Considering this kinda is how CD Projekt Red has always been like. Whenever development of a game wraps up or is in its later stages, many developers and talent depart for various reasons. I imagine that most of the major parts of Cyberpunk 2077 have been completed. Back in August of 2018, it was revealed by Cyberpunk 2077 producer Richard Borzomowski in an interview with Engadget.com, the entire game is playable from start to finish. It doesn't have all the proper assets, playtesting, or bug fixes in place, but seeing the story come together is a critical step in the development development process. What I believe is currently being focused on is polishing the game and adding tons of side content, whether that be quests or cool features like flying vehicles, which is a possibility that may be more unlikely right now. But with these departures, it definitely seems like work is starting to wrap up, which should be encouraging news to anyone hopeful for a release date this year. Additionally, in recent days, CDPR did respond to concerns surrounding Sebastian Stepien's departure by saying, his departure does not affect the pace of work on our latest title in any way. The team working on Cyberpunk 2077 already has over 400 people, which is actually an increase since back in August it was said the company had 300 to 350 people working. So yeah, nothing I'm personally worried about as this isn't necessarily abnormal. In some other more recent news, CD Projekt Red community lead Marcin Mamat has been addressing some questions on the official Cyberpunk 2077 forums. One asked, will there be multiple ways to fire a gun, like a setting to not look down the gun sight and just see the reticle? He would first respond explaining, like most first person shooters, you can of course hip fire, and he would further add in his next post, various augmentations will be able to improve firing from the hip, so it will be viable to use both both ways of shooting. Sight, however, can also provide some additional bonuses. Yeah, so there has been some questions or concerns surrounding gunplay, and personally myself, I thought that it looked pretty good in the gameplay demo that released months ago. Clearly gaining specific augmentations will make this aspect easier in certain areas of combat. The CDPR community lead would also address one more question surrounding the game's soundtrack. In the past, there has been some rumors that people like Kanye West and Lady Gaga could be involved due to Kanye for one following the Cyberpunk 2077 account on Twitter, and two with Lady Gaga, the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account randomly kind of just commented on one of her tweets. Anyway, these are just rumors that could lead to nothing, but on the subject of the game's soundtrack, Marcin Mamat stated, looking at the songs being posted in this thread, I have a feeling a lot of folks will be really surprised with the general music direction we're taking with the game. It will obviously match the theme and complement the world just right, however, I don't think many are expecting where we're going. And for those curious, this thread is one 
100 pages long, with people posting various songs that they believe fit with Cyberpunk 2077, and I do think music in a game like this is extremely important, and being how much I love the soundtrack to The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, I expect they'll knock this aspect out, although I genuinely am curious what direction they may or may not take. Now there are a few more developer responses coming from this forum that I do want to mention. The next question, or really a statement made, is someone saying they do not want a morality meter in the game. They mention games like Red Dead Redemption 2 that incorporate it. In the game, it's called the Honor System, and they feel it does not work. Obviously that's subjective, as personally I do like it, but I understand how some people could become annoyed by that system, as any simple action like running into someone accidentally could result in you losing honor, as well as honor dictating how certain aspects of the Red Dead Redemption 2 story will go. Well anyway, Cyberpunk 2077 developer going by the username Ben Zen would respond saying, We won't do an arbitrary morality meter for Cyberpunk. We try to handle these things in a more organic way, by tracking choices you make and how they affect the people you interact with. So a ganger on the other part of the city won't care if you told a fixer to F off, but the fixer might remember, or maybe they know each other, so now you have this whole new situation on your hands. Basically, we try to keep it as true to life as possible. Now another developer going by the username Lilea also addressed a few questions and confirmed at the moment the only transportation in the game is walking on foot and using an array of motorcycles and vehicles. This developer would also kind of tease the game's photo mode and how it may or may not work. But continuing on, something that's been a bit of a controversial subject as of late is the Epic Game Store. And recently, someone took their fears to Twitter, posting under some fan art that was posted by the Cyberpunk 2077 Twitter account saying, please, please, please don't make this game an exclusive on the Epic Store. And CDPR actually did respond with a pretty firm, that ain't happening, saying, yeah, pass on that, and also they have their own PC store, so that wouldn't make any sense. But anyway, for the last few months, there have been a few interviews done or posted, and I wanted to quickly go over some of the new information coming from these articles. First, VG247 spoke to Cyberpunk 2077 producer Richard Borzomowski, and he gave us some interesting insight into the game. First, he talks NPC crowds and how they are designing this system, saying, Our community system is based around routines. In certain parts of the city, there are communities set up. They have their routines, and they behave differently during the day and night. Districts that might be very lively during the day might be very empty during the night, which might influence you going there because there might be some other guys going around. You have to constantly think about what you're doing at what time. And this is actually very interesting because it does bring more strategy to conducting certain missions and tasks that may involve us entering into a highly populated and dangerous area during the day or at night it's a little easier because of there being less people. Borzomowski would continue next stating like The Witcher 3 they want Night City to feel realistic, which means having some NPCs just doing simple things like shopping and calling people. He would then next discuss one of their challenges with design and making sure they account for each player style, saying, We want to make sure each situation is approachable in different ways for the many different builds the players might have. They have to be able to enter in any way and they have to be able to complete it. This is certainly a challenge for us, but we are building level design around two things. We want to keep every location realistic, we don't want to build big mazes that don't feel right, and office space is an office space. On the other hand, we have to implement all the gameplay systems into them as well. Borzomowski next offered more information on the feeling of the open world and how certain districts will be noticeably different. He outlined how the architecture, NPCs, languages, music, and cars are just some of the aspects that will be different. With a location like Pacifica, as we touched on in my last Cyberpunk 2077 video, we know it's the most dangerous district ruled by gangs and it's a place of immense poverty. And as we were teased in the trailers and gameplay footage, that poverty will be noticeable. But on the flip side, there's a district like City Center, which is the heart of the corporations, and that of course will be showcased by just the look and conditions of the buildings, the district, the wealthy people walking around, the fancy cars, and likely the lower crime rate. Borzomowski would go on to add, all of that adds to the ability to distinguish between each district. We want the player to feel that they're in a district even without looking at their compass. It's a big city, people tend nowadays to use GPS. We're building it in such a fashion that the player should always have a point of interest in sight, so they can orient themselves. It's not always a big building, sometimes it's a hill or the mountain on one side, the sea on the other side. 
Now, the last part of this article also teases that there will be more than just Night City. The author of this article notes how in The Witcher 3, once we reach Skellige, we realize there is more than just one big landmass, but Borzomowski would state, it's the city and there's a certain degree of the outskirts of the city, which is Night City as well. We are not putting an invisible wall after the last building in the city because it would completely break immersion. The city is located on the west coast in California, there is a desert, there might be something else, and we have the sea on the other side. Now that's something else could be referring to the moon mission that was teased in the E3 trailer and also leaked. Based on early cyberpunk material, we know that there are multiple cities in space by 2020, so that makes sense. Also, let's not forget the multiple advertisements, signs hanging around all through Night City, seen in the gameplay demo and trailer that tease space travel. Either way, I am fascinated to see what type of content we may be able to encounter in the sea and the mysterious desert. The Witcher 3 did a great job of encouraging exploration with finding rare loot on small smaller islands, and also, I always felt just a bit of excitement approaching a unique location. Hopefully we get some of that with exploring Night City and wherever else we can go. And just something that I find very interesting that many individuals have already pointed out is that one sign teases setting sail, so maybe there is a mission or exploration that can be done in the Pacific Ocean. But to the last part of this video, I of course need to touch on the French website. Jouic 2's interview with Cyberpunk 2077 lead cinematic animator was Siege Pietris. They discussed a lot of different aspects of the game we'll hopefully get to play soon. First, Pietris would say that the game really started to ramp up production with all the studio working on the game once The Witcher 3's Hardest Stone DLC was released in late 2015, but development really began and started in 2014. The French website later would ask, During the gameplay demo, you had put forward the possibility of having choices that will have a real impact on the scenario, on the unfolding of the story. The promises you made seem huge. How will all that really work? And the response given would be, As you know, Cyberpunk Punk will be an open world RPG, and we insist on the RPG side because it is an element that has been enormously developed. In the game, you will be faced with many choices from the beginning of the adventure, from the moment you have to create your avatar. You will not only have to choose your gender and the color of your skin, but also your liabilities, and it is this passive that will define your personality and the impact you will have in the world of Cyberpunk 2077. And throughout your adventure, you will have choices to make, each having a consequence and an impact, because it's the RPG that we want to shape. And the more you will advance in the game, the more choices you will have to make, not to mention that you can interact with most NPCs. Continuing on, the next question we have is, can you describe the open world to Cyberpunk 2077? What will be its size, for example? Can we expect different settings, such as more natural spaces, or is it a game where we will be confined to a large urban city? And the CDPR dev would respond saying, measuring the size of the open world to Cyberpunk 2077 is difficult. To compare to The Witcher 3, let's just say that the world of the latter was very vast in its length. It was an open world made of very large natural landscapes. Going from point A to point B took a long time because you were riding, but also because it was a game that stretched horizontally. The world of Cyberpunk 2077 is above all a vertical world with buildings everywhere, and this, it is difficult for us to establish a metric comparison. In the demo, you saw the main character waking up in his apartment, looking out his window, and seeing a living world. To go out, take the elevator, you can see there are several floors in a building. The game will allow you to enter many buildings knowing that everything was done by hand, because we believe that quality comes first through manual creation. Nothing is procedural in our world. This is where the city of Night City will be vast to go, thanks to the verticality. Interestingly, it looks like we have confirmation that there will not be procedural generation. There had been early rumors that certain aspects of the world would be used with this, but obviously not. Everything will be handcrafted. Next question we have is, we could see in the demo that it was possible to use knives. Should we expect ad hoc use, or will they be as important as fire Firearms, and Petrus would give a long response, giving an overview on how weapons work in the game. In the demo, you could see several types of weapons in different combat systems. All this is related to the class of the character that you will create, according to the skills you will improve. There will indeed be advantages to using this or that weapon, depending on the increase of the skill chosen to your avatar. You will have the choice between technological weapons, powerful weapons, and intelligent weapons, and each of them will allow you to apprehend the game in several different ways. For example, powerful weapons have a boost that allows allows weapons to ricochet against the walls and thus reach enemies hidden behind walls. Smart weapons take advantage of an auto lock that can target an enemy with homing bullets. As for the melee weapons, you can use the Manus Blades in the demo. These are incredible weapons which are attached to the body of the character and allow him to climb on the walls, but also to kill enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat. There is also another weapon that we did not show in the demo and which is interesting. It is the Katana. So a quick rundown of some of the other highlights in this article is that it's confirmed cats and dogs will be the only 
animals in Night City. A lot of the game is based on Cyberpunk 2020, which maybe that's just obvious, but just pointing it out. You can take control of any vehicle you see in the game except obviously the flying ones. You will be able to customize your car. Gameplay to a cinematic scene is said to be seamless with the slightest transition that you may not notice. And lastly, the game will come when it's ready. So we discussed a lot of new information. Things have been somewhat quiet as of late and I imagine as we push forward into 2019, we should hear a release date announcement very soon if the game is going to be releasing later this year. And no matter what, I imagine we will see or hear something around around E3 2019 time, which happens in June. But yeah, this and the Outer Worlds are my most anticipated games moving forward, and I'm just really excited to jump into both of those worlds and get fully immersed. Anyway, what's your opinions on all the information we discussed today? Do you like how the gameplay looks, and do you think Cyberpunk 2077 could release in fall 2019? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and consider subscribing for much more Cyberpunk 2077 content to come, and I'll see you later.